Man, because he, at the time, Quick Step was dancing in the streets too. I believe with Lock and Tron John and Float Committee and all the guys, you know, down there with, with Clown and so on and so forth. And um, he used to wear this little hat, little black and white hat. He was doing the head spins with that. And, and um, it, it was just so cool. But that day was the first time that we also saw somebody from Europe jump on stage because Lex opened up the door for him. And that was when Maurizio did that famous back drop slide, I mean, a, a back spin. It was on that stage for a video music box. And um, Kid Unique was on the mic. We went on right after KRS One. And you see me. My, my whole routine was flips, kicks, and splits. Because to me, as long as I can do the dance routine with everybody else, and I do my solo, because what I'm going to do is, what am I going to do different as a solo? Or better? I'm going to yeah. break better than legs? Or, or Kenny? I'm a boogie better than Wiggles? Yeah, you were or, doing or, what you were good at. You were doing what you were good bro, at. Because to me, hip hop is always original flavor and style. Plus, for whatever's worth, we all wanted to be Bruce Lee. So we got that attitude from Bruce everything. That's why the, the Muggsies that were done by Kenny, he copied that from Bruce Lee, you know? And a lot of people got the sweeps from Kung Fu movies. So I already knew that I was as authentic as anybody else. I didn't have to be sold on me not being what I was, which was the original flavor B-boy, uh, because a B-boy at the time was a boogie boy also, you know? Yes. Fox boy. Brick boy, boogie boy, down with the culture, you know. So I wasn't, I knew I was down by law for real based on what I had done. So I didn't have a low self esteem problem, but I wasn't you intimidated had the by this. You, you had yeah, the respect well, I, from everyone. But, but you know what, what? But I tell you what I did have. I was intimidated for about 30 seconds. When we were practicing the first time, I said, wait a minute. I looked to my right, I see crazy legs. I looked to my left, I see Ken Swift. Down the way, I see Wiggles. And then the new guy, which was a monster, quick step. And me, bro. And then they hit me. Oh, man, this is going to be so dope because nobody can do what I can do the way I do it. But I'm up rocking with people, and I do kicks and splits, and they can't, man, they can't up rock with me, bro. I'm throwing kicks at them, throwing real punches, doing sweeps, and they're like, yo, this guy, what the hell's going on? They're intimidated because it's real. And then I'm landing in the split, popping up on beat. They could not handle my up rocket. I don't care what anybody says. Yes, it was different from rocking, Brooklyn Rock, or what have you, which personally, I don't like that style. I never really did because it was a little different from what I was used to. You know, I was up tell, to tell me my, about this. Tell me about this right here. Sorry that I cut, cut you off, but tell me no what problem. what's this right here. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch, 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 watch. This is a Halloween party. Yep. Oh, yep, yep, Halloween party. There you go. That's the original. See, because originally we were miming. Now watch, watch what happens after this. Yeah, this is dope. This is me after I took off my so-called um, clothing. Yep, there you go. Now you can see that that's a New York City boogie boy, right? Oh, it's a little locker. Hey, oh, oh, uh, oh, ah, chum, chum, pa, chum. Yep. That's, a, that's inside my karate school. Here's some, now I like this little move here. Huh, huh, ha. And then we got some little. And then we got. Uh huh. What year was yeah. that? What year was that? That was probably 90, around 93. And, and, and is this picture right here? What, what, what oh, is it? Right okay, let me tell you something about that photo there. Holy smokes. Okay. You see Q Unique there in the middle with a striped suit. Q Unique yes. did a song called Keep It Coming. Yeah. Keep yep. It Coming for CNC Music Factory. And then you got Mr. Wiggles there, you got Crazy Legs, and that's Tito G, who, who was Quick Step's original partner. And that's me in the bottom, Fast Feet. But let me tell you something about that night. That night was so important, and I wish we had. Would you know that was at the Palladium, right? Performing for Q Unique. And there's two people who were not in that photo. One of them is Kid Freeze. Wow. And the other one is Powerful Pexta. And why aren't they in that picture? Because I don't understand why that photo. I do not know why. Tony Lopez, Mr. Powerful Pexter. Let me see that again. Look at that right there. Oh, uh, come on now. So again, like I said, I can't claim to me a B-boy. I'm part of hip hop. I do a combination of anything. I won't, I won't embarrass myself or anybody else. But anyone knows that at a live party, I'm taking the girl, bro. I'm taking the girl because to me, <laughs> that's what it was about.
<laughs> That's what it was about. <laughs> but, but, but that day was interesting because legs got so really good at one point. Politicking wasn't part of it no more. I said, listen, I gave him the concept of how hip hop literally is a worldwide, international, multi-billion dollar industry and we didn't have a piece of it because we didn't know the business part of it. Now, Legs was taught by Cool Lady Brew how to do one thing that I was so blown away by her. If you have a, if you tell Crazy Legs, uh, we have a meeting at three o'clock, he'll be there at 2.30. He still never lost that work ethic. Legs is not lazy. He will always show up. And for a minute, he was able to do things that was unheard of. How do you take those three crews? The only thing that's missing was someone from the Incredible Breakers, as far as I go when it comes to New York. That's the only one that was missing in terms of the highest level. But realistically, Rocksteady, New York City Breakers, Dynamic Rockers, all in one show together at the Palladium there. That's a photo that I'll have to send you where Kid Freeze has in Time of the Last Dragon. And of course, he was like, you this time because The Last Dragon was a huge movie. Everybody wanted to be. Oh, by the way, as a quick rewind, I remember now the other member of the Dynamic Breakers. What is it? Tiny. 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 Let me tell you who Tiny was. Tiny literally did the swipe into the 1990 for Lee in the movie Beach Street. Oh, when they're in that audition stage thing, that he does a top a uh, top swipe into a ninety. Yeah, that's that's tiny. Tiny was down that's the dynamic tiny. breaking. Man, all this time I thought it was Lee. <laughs> no, Lee could, you know, Lee could do that. <laughs> Lee could barely do the windmill. Yeah. <laughs> I but, thought but that was, it. for some reason I thought it was Lee. I was like, man, Lee could break too. So now, was that Lee breaking when the battle was going on in Roxy's? Yeah, he was doing that part. He was doing most of that part, you know, because you can see that that's what they were like, oh, he's cute, you know, he was cute about it. But what was crazy was that um, he was in the Dynamic Breakers, and if you look at, if you look in the movie The Last Dragon, where they're doing the scene where The Last Dragon comes in and they're in the disco, you will see people up rocking, boogie boys, but London from, the Dyna- from New York City Breakers was in there too. Wow. I started a battle during lunchtime, this was 1984, when it wasn't big no more. Now it went more Hollywood. Now it went from, from B-Boys to what would have been um, Golden and Globus freaking, you know, breaking. Mm-hmm. But they're now they're locking and they call it that breaking and they're boogie and they call it that breaking and everything's not break dance. And now the, the, you know, the commercial industry took it over and they had to just make believe that, but there was no real battles no more, you know, and they went Hollywood. But it, it, I got them all pumped up. I have a way to get people motivated. And we did a freaking battle during lunch that I wish that was recorded because it was incredible, bro. Incredible. Who was in there? Who was in that battle? Again, Dynamic Break is there. Now, we're, 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 I'm talking about people going down and battling unofficially, but it was a battle. Everyone was just going off We're trying to freaking get their damn props. You know, Tiny was probably... <sighs> London got down, because London's always been good also, but Tiny, I think, was the one doing things that was more acrobatic than most, you know, because he was a small dude. Because even back then, to do a freaking a swipe to the 1990s, people weren't doing that that easy, man. That was, that was a hard yeah. move at that time. That was like yes. some crazy stuff, you know, if you think about it. you know, Very advanced but, um, for that time. Yeah, that, 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 that was super, super advanced for that and time. You said, and you said you're 57 now, correct? Yep. Now, now, what what would you tell yourself if you could go back to be a kid again? Let's say if you're like, let's say before you became a dad and you're living that life of martial arts, learning everything, what is something you would tell yourself if you could go back in the days and, and you talk to, to little, little Jerry Fontanez, what would be something yeah. you would tell him? Well, the first thing I would tell him is that he can, he can do better. Like, I know that if I would have been focused on breaking, because of my flexibility alone, I would be, I would be doing, I would have been inventing so many different moves because, because my ego wouldn't let me to be a biter. I, could, I can't be a biter. That's why I always look at things to be original flavor. You know, that's why, again, you see me martial arts wise, combined with the dancing, no one was doing it like that. 
So I appreciate the fact that I was able to be on beat, be funky and original. The only the only thing that would really tell that kid was that he had he had a little more time. Because I didn't know I was gonna be I was gonna live past 30. And I didn't know this consciously, but subconsciously, I thought that I had to do things now, do things now, do things now. So I would have took my time a little more. Um, and by the time I'm 16, I'm going to be a father. That's, that's evidence that I got to hurry up. Now, remember, guys, this is the crack era. Boogie Down Bronx, 1982. If you think things are bad now, you're mistaken. In the Bronx, during that time, we're talking about I know all the notorious bank robbers and stick of kids and freaking dealers and so on and so forth. They're just friends. What were the top the gangs street. around that time? At that time, do you remember it, from it, your... It wouldn't be gangs. Back then, they didn't have gangs. See, we looked at gangs like California. We laughed at them. Like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, when we seen the movie Colors, we're like, yo, that shit's paid out because the gangs were in the 70s. So by the time... Ah, it was, this is the 80s it, now. Yeah, so we're talking about the 80s. It, it was crews, not gangs. Mm. Crews. So the first crew that was all over was Casanova all over. Casanova crew. You know, that's why when you hear Grandmaster Taz, you know, he's part of the Crasson. So so they got rid of what would have been the colors, which was Lee. Lee iron on letters, I I call it, I call it with patches and stuff like that. And it became sweatshirts with iron on letters. You know, so the so the top um so it it, it was crews and then the crews were known for being not so much just, it, it, it was just a, a talent, like the Unstoppable Crew as an example. DJ, MC, dancers, and then the stick up kids do security. So they don't rob you. You know, so everyone <laughs> has a job. Everybody has a job. The hell? <laughs> yeah, that's the way you do it. Yeah, the stick up kids now, they're gonna let you get stuck up, but you know and, what they will see, do? And you see a big difference now from the era of now and back then, correct? Oh, there's oil and water. The difference was that back then, there was respect for talent. You know, you, you literally had to be good at something to get props. And, and the props came from the battle. Hip hop is about the battle, whether you battle your MC battle, DJ battle, break battle, graffiti battle. And then if you didn't have those talents at that level, then you're just a fly guy. That means you battle in with your clothes. You battle it with yeah. your car. You battle it with your, you know, if you play slug, if you play stickball, if you play basketball, you know, you'll get a superstar based on your skills. You know, yes, it did include if you was a, a dealer, but that was a little different because, you know, the same guys that couldn't make it in entertainment because they had some street cred, they became the top dealers. At one point, because at least they had some money to start off some, 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 you know, some drugs, you know. So that's the sad thing about it. That the crack era took away so many of our so-called legends, and then after they actually they did a they did a a, a play called "So What Happens Now." Rocksteady did a play off Broadway play called "So What Happens Now," and and, and in one of the scenes, um, Ken Swift says when he goes to a job application and they ask about his skills, he says, "I spin on my head." You know, like, like you, you can't go too far with that. That's why, to me, it, it drove me crazy how both in martial arts and in hip hop in the late 80s, pioneers and legends or great martial artists or great MCs or, or dancers were broke. They were still living with moms in the projects. And I was like, bro, I don't even have a GED, but I got people with PhDs working for me. And in 1992, I even spoke at NYU. So what you going to do? You know, so my whole thing was that I wanted to become a black belt in business and how to be a black belt father and be a black belt in life. So when I started, you know, when I got down with, with legs and rock steady, all I wanted to do was honestly do my part to motivate someone who I think that they had unfinished business. You know, unbeknownst to me that that became the biggest error of what happens with breaking. The third generation of the breaking is the biggest, which is now, or fourth, whatever you want to call it. Because, and it all came from not the 1970s, not the 1980s, and I can say this with no hesitation, because if anyone wants to keep it real, they were not in the palladium breaking, locking, popping, and boogieing with rock steady, New York City breakers, and a dynamic rockers, Mr. Headspin himself, 
That's history. Anything that comes now is after that fact. When Legs went out to Europe the first time, they thought he was dead, bro. That was wow. the rumor because they hadn't seen any breakers. And these guys knew their history. You had guys that were coming down here. The only ones that never stopped breaking were down in the streets. 42nd oh, you know Street that battle where... squad from Germany and Italy yeah, 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 yeah. in, in the early remember. 90s, and they were bro, hitting bro, bro. with clowning bro, them, on, right? Hold, hold on a second. Yeah, he wrote, how about this? Literally, he's the first person who wrote my name in that history. You know what I'm saying? Who? Who? The, the, the main guy from Battle Squad. Oh, no, Storm? From Germany. Storm. Storm. Yeah, B-Boy Storm. Yeah, B-Boy Storm. He wrote it where? Where, where did he write he it? Wrote a book, he wrote a book in German and translated to English about breaking, about the whole world. He talked about clown. He talked about all those freaking people. Wow. Bro. He mentioned okay, me I got to search for that book now. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Bro, it, it's crazy because I got props from that. And then Lex used to say at the Rock City anniversary, but never when I was there. Which is so weird. He even said it on Tony Touch Show, but he never said it when I was there. Was, I, I just, I always thought that. that I needed the props, bro. I don't need props from anybody that's not earned. But if you keep it real, like I, I'll give an example. And I love so many people, but I, 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 I'll mention a few names. Um, Smirk was a student for a little while. No question. Smirk, I love Smirk. Yeah, he was making Smirk. money. He was doing. He was making money doing graffiti pieces. In stores and you know, so he was making young kid making freaking money. Loved it. He was a student of two people, Ken Swift and Leg. So he had a combination of both. That's why when you see a lot of things that he does, that's Ken mm -hmm. Swift's flavor. When he starts doing the and all that other stuff, that's Ken Swift's flavor. But then he was also down with Lex. Lex Almighty, when he came from Maryland, before he changed Low the master. name to again, bro. These, these kids are all around. You understand? And, they, and they're being respectful. I must say. Then you had other people that, to me, I didn't feel comfortable being around with them because I know myself. I'd rather be a comedian than to get serious. So I don't want to be around no freaking bums. Don't be, I don't want to be around a drunk. I don't want to be around someone that's, you know, brash. Now, some people had substance abuse, but they were cool in the gang, and I never had problems with them at all. I, I love Frosty Freeze. That was my man. He was a great freaking thing. Love that guy. That's why I sent you a photo of Frosty Freeze. Um, Mr. Freeze, well, I love that guy. Mr. Freeze has so much footage of what? Of when my school on Broadway was used to train and work out for Jam on the Groove. That's right. Okay, so that was my school on Broadway between 55th and 54th Street. So there's footage of when there was Kenny... But, but the one who has most of the footage is Mr. Freeze himself, Mark. Well, he has all of that freaking footage. He even has his, his dog used to break and used to freaking use those little um, <laughs> I mean, it, it, just awesome. But it, so, so, you know, again, I, I know that my influence was because I was a professional. And because of that, I was able to convey something that was very important. An art is an art is an art. When I went down to um, NYU, representing the nomads, rest in peace, my brother, MC Beretta, and Q Unique, they were known as the nomads. They were part of VIP Records, and VIP Records was started by one of my students, now and, and, and it's because I would end the class and I would ask people a question like, what would you do if you knew it was impossible to fail? And my student, Randy, came to me and he says, oh, I, sir, I want to start a record label. I said, well, I, I gave him two books, one by Kashif and Spearman, which is how to start your own record label. And he did, and he got a partner, Al Pizarro, who had a record pool, and then he says, What year was I, I, that? I need... What year was that? 92. And then he says to me, um, I need a, a, a group. I said, Well, I got a group. And at the time, we didn't have a name for the Nomads. They were going to be sticker kids. There were no types of stuff. They ended up being the Nomads. And, and then I made them some shirts. And so I was, I was like their acting manager until they went and got some management. Because again, I'm busy. I'm like, you know, I, I, I got a staff, I got schools in Bronx. Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan. I'm freaking paying freaking staff. I got, you know, I'm dealing with real estate, you know, like no joke, you know, like real serious stuff. And uh, so on my side, I would, I would try to help out as much as possible. And, um, you know, it, it, it was incredible times. Fast forward to 
a few years after, and he said to me just the other day, man, Kick Lai said to me, man, if I would have listened to you way back when. <laughs> because what I said to them, listen, you guys are being paid being performers. That means that you hired help like a call girl. You're a stripper. You're whoever they call you. If they don't call you, you can't go have a show. You make money being an educator. Teach people how to dance, MC, graffiti, DJ, etc. So when I when I um, I have a logo of me throwing the kick straight to the top, but there's also there's also a logo Is of that a that guy right there? My, boom. There's a guy. Yeah, that that's that's not the logo. That's the photo of the silhouette that becomes the logo. So the answer is yes. That's the oh. original photo of what becomes the logo for actually here's on my pants. That right yes, I see. It's like the NBA. Yeah, exactly. Well, the NBA doesn't have black in the logo, but that's exactly what my see. That's that's um Jerry West and that's Jerry Fast Refont. That's the difference between the NBA. That's they only got red, dope. white, and blue, and I got black. So I became, I became a manufacturer of clothes. Like right now, I'm in my uniform as we speak. Well, you know? I know you I built a big school because you were everywhere. In fact, there's a picture right there in 93. Yeah, well, I, 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 at that time, that was, man, that was, that was, I mean, that year we won the world championships. My students won lightweight, middleweight, and I won the light heavyweight world championship. So we were the That's first amazing. school ever in the history of martial arts to ask three world titles in three different weight categories. And that was the year 1993. By 1994, between 93 and 94, I started doing my own TV show on Bronx Net, and I did 24 episodes that aired and 25 total. So what I, what I was doing was, it was martial arts and hip hop. Basically, it was my students, my family and friends that I was exposing to try to teach them how to become professionals. You know, because again, when I spoke in NYU, it was about music business. I said, no, 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 you got it backwards. It's called business and then whatever else. Business is the first part. That means you have to dot the I's, cross the T's, get there early, negotiate a deal, something that makes sense, and make sure you cover your butt. Don't get emotional, get technical. And, and that'll make a world of a difference. That's why a lot of people, you know, when they got into business, they started nonprofit organizations and stuff like that, and end up getting in trouble, you know, because they don't really know how to follow the nonprofit business. So I'd rather go for profit, that's just the way I did it. Not that, you know, that's not that you have to. But I knew that there was so much space for improvement. So to see that today breaking is going to the Olympics and all the stuff that's happening, I don't agree with a lot of the stuff, but that's that's okay. Wait, and I which, got that was for, actually my next question. What what is yeah. your opinion on breaking going to the Olympics? Well, first of all, let's think about really what it is. It's impossible. So the impossible is happening. You took a bunch of bums that had no, they don't have a pot to piss in the throw, a window to throw it out of, meaning hip hop, that comes from the gang culture. And the division of it now goes to what would be the International Olympic Committee, worldwide, official. So what I like about it is that it's impossible for that to happen. So that means there's been a lot of progress and you gotta give props. I know people get upset. But the Europeans are the ones that really made it happen. I think Storm had a lot to do with it. And again, it's not my industry as detailed as it used to be, but I can't say one thing. Those guys took it serious. They respected it from not just um, a cultural standpoint, because they, they know the history. They were, they, were, they were doing their stuff. If it wasn't for the Europeans, it would never have happened. Because the Americans didn't give a damn about freaking Britain. They made fun of us as far back as 1979. So let's keep it real. So when guys start talking, it is the artists are the ones that are saying it shouldn't be put in that platform. Yeah, no doubt about it. And those are the guys that can't even dance no more and they can't even see their freaking, you know, their belly. They, their belly, they can't see their toes. You know, so people that have opinions because they're not involved no more, so that's just ego-based. What I love is that you have children of all ages worldwide now that have a common denominator. You got grandparents and parents and grandchildren who can actually turn around and have a great time and be respected for something that they love. It's always been about family. 
Martial arts to me also is helping people get home safe. Well, you get home safe when you have street credibility for doing something that people respect. They don't have to be for fighting, and, they, and they'll be, oh, leave him alone. He's not down with you know. He's not down with that. You know, they'll protect you if you're the basketball player, if you're the if you're the you know whatever it is. So I love that side. But what saddens me the most is how many of the so-called pioneers and legends just never got their shit together, man. Mentally. And I know that a lot of them are heartbroken, and they should be heartbroken, but he, how about if I say this? You're old enough. Get your shit together. First, learn how to speak English. Learn how to speak English. Learn how to articulate the speaking language. So like that you can inspire and motivate others. Uh, and, 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 and I hope and I pray that you wake the hell up and understand that I don't care what age you are, you're still alive, you're still getting the best shape ever. And the knowledge that you have from whether it's the 70s, the 80s, or the 90s, oh my God, if you properly package that, they would love to hear it because it's part of their history and culture. But if you come at them with an attitude, like, yo, that shit is whack, who's not going to respond? Come on, man, when we were young, so with you feel they're phones, bitter? You feel they're bitter? They, yeah, they're bitter with good reason. Because when they look in the mirror, they realize they messed up. But what I'm saying is that not really. You still got a chance that you're here. You know, think about this. The mob heads back in the days was a big crew. They were doing house music combined with what would have been the equivalent to maybe um, hip hop. Mm -hmm. Hip-hop dancing, right? Which is a whole other facade, right? Remember the time they do the whole routine that Wiggles and Fables did. So that was a, uh, yeah. a bite yes. to me. That was done by Stretch. He was, the, he was the actual, one of the leaders of the mop heads. And he choreographed that. Now, I told Wiggles, bro, what the hell? Become a choreographer. He didn't want to, which was fine. Props to Wiggles, because if it wasn't for Wiggles, the reunion would have never happened. Wiggles had always been a true blue connector of people. You know? So that's made the difference. That's why, you know, Fables was able to become vice president for years with Rock City. That's the reason why Mr. Freeze came around, because Lex was not easy to deal with. It was easier to deal with when I was around because I was showing him other things. But I got I cannot say that, you know, Legs and I were like brothers to the point where if I loan the money, I'm getting it back with no hesitation. If we go eat, I pay or he pays, or we both pay. We, you know what I'm saying? So he's a true blue. When 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 I when they rent in my spot, I'm getting paid. I don't even have to ever, ever, ever second guess. You know, whatever happened years after that, I don't really know and I can't attest to that, but I can say that, you know, literally this guy's work ethic is impeccable and he's a straight shooter. Whether you like it or not, he wasn't trying to lie if he did because he believed that shit, <laughs> you know, when he was doing it. Yeah, that's yeah, why, I see. That's why, yeah, that's why when, when you have the conflict between if breaking was just kept with the six step and, the, and, and that flavor without having the power moves and all that other stuff, how many people would still be involved in it? You know, that means we still would have been doing all that old stuff. And I know that that's, um, you know, one of those arguments between the first generation, or I should say the second generation of breakers, you know, because that would have been the late, you know, late seventies, early eighties. Um, but I, I believe that, why well, not? I believe, I know that all of that was important. When, when Wicked, Got the award for breaking with, um, it, it was Wicked and another, I'm going blank at his name right now. Oh my God. But he Wicked was down from with Chicago or Wicked from California? California Wicked. That's still breaking like crazy, too. I, I'm proud of him. Yeah, he's a DJ he, too now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he came into my car. I, I, everyone, I had a ride, so everybody used to come. And, 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 and I told him, um, I forgot what the conversation, oh, I told him, listen, you should be teaching. I was telling everybody you should be teaching because we learned how to become karate instructors from dance studios, Arthur Murray Dance and Fred Astaire Dance. So the whole concept of having a mirror and the floor, that comes from dancing. So I'm like, you guys, wow. we're already dancing. So let's teach dancing. 
you know, and different styles of dancing. Well, you got four different styles. You can teach them how to lock, how to, how to, how to up rock, how to uh, no, no, lock, break. No, no, wait. Popping? Yeah, lock, 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 break, popping, or boogaloo. And then, um, wait, what the hell am I missing? Breaking, boogie, up rocking, and locking. Yeah. You can teach different styles, different levels, have tournaments, all that stuff. I laid that all out way back when. And they didn't see it. And I said, you can't be going up to the YouTube job. There's so many people who could be on that freaking music video on that damn stage. What, what are you doing? Have your location, have a home, teach everybody, and you can still go in the weekends and do what the hell you have to do. That's the way I looked at it. And I still look at it right now. You know, so some of my students, as you know, they became really good students and teachers. We talk about, you know, as being the anomaly. That's Ian. Little Ian becomes, you know, a thinking, or uh, 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 you call him Bam Bam. Here he is, learns how to dance. He can MC with the best of them. He can freestyle, doesn't drink, doesn't smoke. Freaking, you know, he's doing his damn thing. He's a comedian. He's freaking hilarious. You know, doesn't have any children yet, whatever the case may be. But the point is that I know that we influence a lot of people because of the art, not just negatively. Positively can be done also too. And, and I think that's really what's sad because a lot of the guys that were first generation didn't know how to take that energy that they had that they spent in the dancing. So that's why they got all messed up. You know, when, when guys were coming up and they were blasted and I'm like... I'm trying to have a conversation with somebody. You know what I'm saying, not me, you know what I'm saying? No, but I don't know what you're saying, and I don't know what you mean. And I was insulted. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, like, stop that. So so what is something people um, seem to misunderstand about you? The number one thing that most people understand about me is that they think that it's an ego that I have. They say, man, this guy, you know, he has, he, 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 he has this ego. Because I know that I have a, a larger-than-life personality. But it's because I'm excited about things. I'm excited about being alive, bro. You know how many people died, including my brother? So when I look at, so when I do things, I do it with urgency because we don't know how much time we have. Like, so I thought I was going to be dead by age 30. So when someone says, yo, we do that tomorrow. Tomorrow? Why, why, why tomorrow? So we, we're here right freaking now. Well, what do you mean tomorrow? How about we don't have a tomorrow? How many tomorrows do we freaking have? So they were past, they, they were past about things, and life is not passive. Life is brutal. Life is scary. Life is limited. So I don't care about who, how, who you are, how strong you are. You don't know when you're not going to be here. So the only opportunity that you have, see, I can get metaphysical with the fact, the fact of the matter is there's no such thing as time. It's only called the present. It's called the past because you compare it to what will be the present because they're all relative. There's no future. It's called the present because that's also as compared to. So everything is present. And what present means? A gift. It's a gift. This is a gift. So what are we going to turn around and freaking what, delay it? Today we had an opportunity to test our intestinal fortitude and perseverance. It took us almost two hours, about four different takes for this to happen. So you got an attitude of success. We spoke about it. We're martial artists. You think I'm gonna get discouraged? Heck no, that's not gonna happen. So when the average person doesn't have that attitude, then there's something wrong with us. Damn, that guy's too pushy, bro. Yo, he didn't take no for an answer. Yo, I was trying to chill. Yo, you got excusitis. Excusitis is a freaking illness that most people have and artists have it all the time because an artist basically is a prima donna. They want people to love them for what they can do and express themselves. Bro, you got there late. Yeah, yeah, but that's what... No. Do not mess around with people's time. That's why when, when, when you sent me the link, I'm on it. Technology is trying to challenge me, and I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to let that negative energy get me. I, I was just hoping that you were going to continue to persevere, because to me, no, this is something that's so important. Now, what was I telling you? What was I telling you during... This is this my point. point. You're saying... You're saying ex what you was trying to do was keep me on course. Stay the course. Please understand And you gave a comparison to people in the past. And remember, for whatever's worth, I've been interviewing people since 1993, 1994. In martial arts, when, when someone like 
Billy Bland, when they got the, um, the Geico commercial about two years ago, and they were all over the place, Geico. And, and my man, Michael Jai White, when it was, he had the number one movie on Netflix. Within 24 hours of those two things happening, I interviewed both of them. Because I thought that would have been a, a, a different experience again. You have to deal with their, their you know, management or, or agents. But no, those are my boys. Yo, let's do it now. And I interviewed them. When you see a movie like American Ninja, and it's written by the number one martial arts superstar, Mike Stone, before even Chuck Norris, and he turns around and he does a movie called, he writes Enter the Ninja, and he stars as the top villain of American Ninja. Well, he is the first martial arts superstar, and I put him on a Zoom call. He had never done that before. That's called an impossible interview to have. You know, I sent you a little one of a girl who I'm so, so, there's two women that I adore like what they are, my sisters in the arts. And only because I met her first, the first one had to be Anita, Anita, Anita. Anita is Rockefeller. Shout out to Rockefeller. And now hopefully her husband, her. her husband, Quick Step, that's my man. And I knew them way before they were married, as you know, but those, and to me, that's probably the best husband wife dance crew ever. I, like, they, if they had husband wife, I don't know, how, I don't know who's gonna beat them. I mean, let's keep it real. Yeah. That, that would be hard. They, they, because- they, put, they put the pedestal very high and as a couple. Because me, myself, I, I, I'm, I, I've been with my wife for 17 years and I look at them as like a staple. <laughs> Same as Honey Rock and Orco now. Well, that, don't, okay, so now, so, so now, so this is, this is how it goes, right? So, Anita, when I met Anita, and again, I, I call her Rocket Fredder sometimes, but that's Anita, right? She's Anita to me. She literally had another boyfriend and was dancing in the streets. It was house. House. She could dance anything. Now, when you bring in Honey Rockwell, that's a different thing. She comes from gymnastics. And she also comes from what would be traditional dance like ballet. Mm-hmm. So she was, she was different, but the flexibility was my made it different. But what both of these have is a work ethic. They knew they were part of an industry that was male dominant and they had to get their freaking props and they were not lazy in their learning. And, and Honey Rockwell, as an example, never called it practice. She said, we're going to go work out, we're going to go work out, we're going to go work out. To her, it was a workout. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's a workout. And I love that. I even had her in my karate school in New Jersey when I ended up over there. She was teaching for a while. You know, so Honey, he's been an educator for a minute. You know, so those two women to me are the twin pillars of breaking. I'm not talking about men. Oh, women. So you will say an example for any B girl out there if they want to learn work ethics and just perseverance and patience now, it, it, and it all that. It, like no, no, it, it, it wouldn't be B girls. It'll be it'll be breakers because the men will learn more. The bullshit that they had to deal with. Oh, if men were able wow. to deal with what they, that, they, those women literally are queens that they, they continue to earn it. Okay. Continue to oh, listen. This is the only difference. One of them went through what would have been the nonprofit route with her husband. And who do you think was Honey Rock was mentor to run a successful dance studio in Atlanta? Okay, Oko always thanks me over and over again. I'm the one that broke you're it down one of to them. them. Because every I talk to her, every time I talk, she's my sister right there, and every time I speak to her. She always mentions you. But this is my point, because what I saw when she, when she, she called me, as a matter of fact, when she just had the big 5-0 birthday, I'm going to say it. She called me the next day because she was having a hard time dealing with that. She was also having a hard time dealing with what would have been a business owner. And she knew who to call. And I'm so proud because literally it's the impossible how many people who started when those two girls started are gone? Yes. And if they're alive, they can't even see their toes. <laughs> now, on top of that, 
Think about how many shows they continue to freaking do in one capacity or another because, you know, those girls, I, I love them. Now, what broke my heart the most was in the beginning because they freaking used them against each other and it used to drive me freaking crazy. That was the biggest no-no. I did not like that. I did not like that. I did not like that. And that was during the time where I couldn't be any influence because I already had... I was more like the businessman who now I'm the fly in the war. I'm not involved in the same capacity. They're still using my place. So I'll show you a photo where you see Anita and Honey Rockwell in the same photo and it's in my karate school and so on and so forth. So that, you know, which was interesting. But they, what they did to those two girls, putting them against each other, was a freaking disgusting thing to me. Personally. However, what beautiful thing. Think about this. One has a bunch of children, the other has none. So they're opposite in so many different ways. So it shows a perspective how they can still benefit from what would have been being women, but from two different perspectives. You know? So they're the two most respected breakers to me. Period. Amazing. And, I, and I, I agree with you. A thousand percent. A thousand percent. I met Rockefeller. She went to my high school. When I was, uh, I believe, a junior or, or a sophomore, and she was teaching in a, in a classroom hey, with her so husband. That's that, 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 Fassie right there, the original Fassie. <laughs> that's my mom. Oh, snap. <laughs> Shout out to they the original Fassie. Yeah, I, it, yeah, but I'm doing an interview. I, I mean, it, it was important. Listen, so I'm down to 5%. So, for okay, so, so this is what we're going to do right now. Yeah. If you could be remembered for one thing, what would it be? I could, if I could be remembered for one thing, what would it be? It would be really simple. Against all odds, in spite of what would be our mental limitations, you can prove to yourself what I believe, and this is what I believe. I believe that God gives you a gift of life. What you do with that gift is your gift back. And I've always wanted to make sure that I showed the gratitude and appreciation for my God-given skills and moments in this freaking life. And it's a sin when you take that and disregard it, which includes doing wrong knowingly, which is called sin. And sin means missing the mark. So to be an example of possibility, with the intention of doing what I know is the truth and I've known since the beginning of time. We're the greatest creation by the creator. And our representation makes us lords of this realm and it's between your ears. I always walk to tournaments making believe like I already won grand champion because I began with the end of mind. How can I ever, with no GED, have people with PhDs work for me? How can I travel the world multiple times? And at age 57 now, I'm fighting guys 40 years younger and beating them because I know there's no such thing as time. So I want to be an example of possibility, not by talking. Time is an action. So that's it. Being what would be what we're supposed to be. The image of the creator. When you're being creative, you're being in one, one with the creator. And I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about the truth. We're not... Some people believe that humans can have a spiritual experience. We're spirits having a human experience. And when you understand that, they know that they can't touch you because you're too internal and external. The only reason why this is what would be this photo because of the mathematical equation right now that's creating what would be this frequency, and that's what you're seeing this. If this was another lens, you would have seen nothing but energy, because we're up, made up mostly of water, and, and that's energy. But while being metaphysical, is just a simple fact. Regardless of what style of martial arts, what style of art it is, it's the truth. We are phenomenal, and most people act as if we ain't shit. So they're right, and I don't like that part. High standards. Man, that was amazing. That's an amazing exit of the show. Wow, I'm so honored. And you don't even understand. I've, just in this couple of hours that we've been going through back and forth with 
troubleshooting, which is all good because it teaches us and it reminds us that we need to stay strong and keep it moving. Even obstacles show up in front of us. And, and Jerry, wait, 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 wait. that's how you. we get stronger. Wait, wait, that's how we yes. get stronger. Right? So, 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 so the fact of the matter is that that's how we get stronger with opportunities to grow, not problems, opportunity to grow. Listen, we didn't get a chance to talk about a whole bunch of stuff, but I can't say this. I'm gonna give props to my man, Forrest Gump, because Forrest didn't mention me. For whatever it's worth, he doesn't remember the explicit detail of how we actually met. Before what it, but, but the truth of the matter is that on a Wednesday night, when he came over to my karate school and I was getting ready to leave, he came with me in a taxi ride because I didn't want to drive to the, to the Zulu Nation meeting every two weeks. While going there, the cop stopped us on the sporadic stop, and then we continued. I said, I'm fat. I'm, you know, I mentioned who I was, and they're all oh, okay, and then they let us go. And then from there, history was made. Uh, all those other additional things we mentioned about other stuff. I don't know all those details, but I know one thing. As far as came, it was not for martial arts. I mean, it was for martial arts. And, and, and then from there, man, when he was DJing for BAM, I was proud of him with all the stuff that he did. So I got to give props to him. Thank you, brother. Oh, Thank no. you. Now, now I'm gonna give you your own screen, and I want you. I, I want you to tell everyone what are you up to these days. Where can people find you and connect with you? So take it away, my brother. Okay, so this is Grandmaster Jerry Fassi Fontenay. So for whatever it's worth, my intentions is what I did before, except now it's even more powerful. I'm 57 years young or 12 years old. I'd rather be 12 years old. That's why you see me still wearing the hat on the side. So my goal is to continue. <laughs> Live, um, leading by example, I have a program called the Fast Free Forever program. It's about food, focus, fitness, and flexibility and finance. Fast Free Forever. I'm easily found at Jerry Fast Free, any Google search, but you might get confused. You see me as an educator, or as a motivator. You also see me as a martial artist. You also see me as a dancer and, I, and as a parent, which I've done some incredible like that too. So I'm easy to find. My intention is to help people achieve their lifetime dreams and goals via two things. Martial arts and dance. So what I will be doing more of is dancing because my body has the collagen that it needs now, so my joints don't hurt any longer, baby. So I can do what needs to be done. Okay, okay. Well, Jerry, thank you very much. I appreciate you, and this is the reason why I do this show to give you the flowers now that you're here in the present moment, as you said. Uh, we're doing this right now, and you are a gift to this world. Let me tell you, you've been an inspiration for so long, not only to me, but to so many people around the world. They might not tell you that, but trust me, they're out there talking about you, brother. But thank you, brother. I appreciate you, man. And ladies and gentlemen, that is Jerry, the furious, fast feet, <laughs> Fontenay. I, I go by the name of Flashback. Anything else you want to yeah. say, Jerry? Listen, I'm proud of you. And I got to give props to anyone who has been involved with you because we one plus one could be two, but one plus one could be 11. That's synergy. That's what it's all about. Us one. Thank you, brother. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. And, and I'll give you a call tomorrow. Thank you very much, man. Hey, hey real quick. And when I say A.B., you say see ya. A.B. See ya. <laughs> Be out of here. All right, peace, y'all. <laughs>